What comes to mind when you think of comfort food? If you're like a lot of people, there's nothing more satisfying than the thought of your mom or grandma's slow-cooked fork tender pot roast. I'm Chef Michael Ollier with the Certified Angus Beef brand. Today, I'm going to show you how to braise a roast. Braising is when you cook meat in a tightly covered container in liquid. Braising is a low and slow cooking method, which means the meat will cook at a low temperature for a long amount of time, just like that perfect, comforting pot roast. It's a great way to cook it on the weekend when you have some extra time, but don't let that worry you. Putting together a braised dish is easy and you're gonna love the results. First, you wanna choose your beef. Braising is a wonderful technique for cooking less tender cuts of beef. The low heat and liquid gently cook the roast over a long period of time, so it leaves you with melt in your mouth, fork tender beef. Even better, most of the less tender cuts are also less expensive. Braising is a great way to enjoy a delicious meal at a very reasonable cost. It's easy and economical. Any chuck roast, bottom round, brisket, or eye of round are ideal choices for braising. Today I'm going to prepare a nice, thick chuck roast, which is the classic cut for a traditional pot roast. For the best flavor, look for the Certified Angus Beef brand. Marbling, these little white flecks of flavor, is what sets the Certified Angus Beef brand apart. As the roast cooks, that marbling is going to melt and give your beef incredible flavor, tenderness, and juiciness. First, preheat your pan over medium-high heat. I prefer to use a Dutch oven like this one because it holds the heat so well, and the heavy lid will really help trap the moist heat inside the pan. You can use any large, heavy bottom pan as long as it is oven safe and has a tight fitting lid. While our pan is heating up, let's season our beef. You could add all kinds of rubs to create different flavor profiles, but today I'm using just two ingredients, kosher salt and freshly ground black pepper. That's all you need to enhance the wonderful, robust beef flavor of a chuck roast. Season all sides generously, because this is a really large piece of meat. Remember to keep food safety in mind whenever you're handling raw meat. Make sure to wash your hands thoroughly, as well as any cutting boards, knives, or utensils it touches. Now it's time to add a bit of oil to the pan, just enough to thinly coat the bottom. This is going to help prevent the beef from sticking. Once the oil begins to shimmer in the pan and just begins to smoke, it's the ideal time to add the beef. Use tongs and gently lower the roast into the pan and set it down away from you to help avoid any splatters. Listen to that sizzle. That's going to sear the beef wonderfully. Searing the meat and letting it brown before we get it into the oven is really going to develop some robust flavors. It's well worth the extra few minutes and it gives off a wonderful aroma. Once the bottom of the roast is seared, you'll know it because it'll lift up easily from the bottom of the pan. If it resists when you try to move it, it needs a little longer. This is ready to go. Also, see how the color of the meat changes on the seared side? Flip your roast over and sear the other side. After the top and bottom are done, make sure all the large sides are seared. Once your roast is completely browned, transfer it to a plate. Although it's browned on the outside, the inside is still very raw. To your hot pan, add some rough chopped vegetables. I'm using a classic combination called mirepoix, onion, carrots, and celery. These are going to give great layers of flavor as everything cooks together. As the vegetables cook, they're going to start to brown and caramelize. Stir them occasionally to keep them from burning. After they start to brown, I like to stir in a little bit of tomato paste. This will deepen and brighten the flavor and enhance the color. Cook 
cook everything another two or three minutes. Now it's time to deglaze your pan. Deglazing means we want to lift those tiny brown bits that are sticking to the bottom of the pan. Those brown bits are known as fond and are full of more wonderful, rich flavor from the beef and vegetables. I like to use red wine to deglaze, but you can use broth or even water. Take about a cup and add it to your hot pan, scraping up those brown bits of flavor from the bottom. The other reason deglazing is important, now you've got an open bottle of wine. Feel free to pour yourself a glass to sit back and enjoy as your roast cooks. Once the wine and vegetables are simmering, gently add your roast back to the pan. I like to add some fresh herbs at this point, like thyme and bay leaves. Then take some beef broth and partially cover your roast. It should come up just about halfway or a third. I'm using packaged beef broth, but use homemade beef stock if you have that available. At this point, if you prefer, you can use a slow cooker or a crock pot instead of your oven. Once the pan is deglazed, just assemble the vegetables, wine, roast, and stock in your crock instead. Cover and cook on the low setting for six to eight hours. Cover your pot with its lid. Make sure the edges are sealed as tightly as possible. The goal is to trap the moisture as the roast and broth simmer. Take your covered pot and place it in a low oven, about 175 degrees. Remember that low and slow is the key to a tender roast. Let's take our roast out of the oven. Your roast is done when it's fork tender. The exact time will depend on the size of your roast. It took six hours for our four pound roast. When you're braising, there's no need to use a meat thermometer to check when your beef is done. After such a long time, rest assured, your roast will be fully cooked. So rather than looking for a particular temperature, we're checking for tenderness. See how the meat just falls apart and how juicy and delicious it looks? Gently remove your roast from the pan and place it on a clean serving plate. A hearty, delicious, economical meal after just a few minutes of prep time. Grandma would be proud. For more cooking tips and mouth-watering recipes, visit CertifiedAngusBeef.com.